This is amazing. What if you can use AI or chat GPT to understand more about Bible? Using this Bible GPT, you are able to create images like these to understand Bible, to create charts like these to identify the word reference, translate Bible in various languages like this, and understanding the context and the reference of various verses in the Bible. That's exactly what we're going to see today. Let's get started. Hi everyone, I'm really excited to show you about Bible GPT. I'm going to take you through different use cases and how this can be used to understand more about Bible. But before that, I regularly create videos in regards to artificial intelligence on my YouTube channel. So do subscribe and click the bell icon to stay tuned. Coming to Bible GPT, this is the custom GPT which I have created. I've already covered how to create custom GPT in a completely different video, which I will link that in the description below. This Bible GPT is primarily focused on understanding more about Bible. So you can ask questions like explain Genesis 1-1, interpret Psalm 23, what's the context of Matthew 5-9, and who was Paul talking in Romans 1? Let's see some examples. First, I asked, what are the scientific truths we know from the book of Job before it was even invented? List all. And here is the response. Here are a few examples that some interpret as being in line with the later scientific discoveries. The Earth's suspension in space is referenced in Job 26.7. It mentions God hangs the Earth on nothing, the hydrological cycle. Then it mentions about the expansion of the universe in Job 9.8. Describes God as stretching out the heavens. And the fourth one is the uniqueness of snowflakes. Then ocean springs, existence of air weight, mentioned in Job 28.25. Dinosaurs are large creatures. In Job 40.15-24 it says, Behemoth. So yeah, these are the things which was identified even before it was invented. And I asked it to give me a pictorial representation of the above. And it gave me this image. The earth hangs in nothing, the hydraulic cycle, the dinosaur, the snowflakes and other things. Next I asked, translate Genesis 1-1 in Tamil. And it translated like this. Then I asked, make it more simple for kids. Then it made it more simple for kids. You can now translate Bible to any untranslated language now. Next, understanding the context of a verse or to whom it is talking to. So I asked, who was Paul talking to in Romans 1? In the first chapter of the epistle to the Romans, the Apostle Paul is addressing the Christian community in Rome and gives us more information. Next, I asked Mark 1-2 where it's referencing from. So it's cross-reference. And here is the response. Mark 1-2 references text from Old Testament, specifically from prophets Isaiah and Malachi. And it mentions Malachi 3-1 and Isaiah 43. So we can identify cross-reference and the context of the verse. Then I asked, explain Romans 8 as you explain to a kid. And here is the response. Then I asked, how above verse is in line with love of God leads us to repentance with verse. And here is the explanation. The concept that God's kindness is intended to lead you to repentance is found in Romans 2.4. This idea aligns well with the Romans 8.1 which states, therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. In this way, now we understood the context and what the verse actually means. Next, I asked, analyze and give me graph on where God was angry in the Old Testament in Bible. And it gave me a chart on the number of times God was angry in the various books of the Bible. Then I asked, show me places where God was angry after crucifixion. And here is the response. In the New Testament, the emphasis is more on God's love, grace, and the fulfillment of prophecy through Jesus Christ. And here are the reference. Then I asked where it is mentioned that God won't be angry anymore. The Bible mentions God won't be angry anymore in several verses, including Isaiah 54.9 and Isaiah 54.10. Then I asked what's the context of this verse to the previous Isaiah 53 chapter. So Isaiah 53 focused on suffering and atoning sacrifice of Jesus Christ. So as a follow-up, he says that after the sacrifice, God is no more angry with the people. Next, I asked, give me an image of how Garden of Eden would have looked like. 
and here is the image it generated it is beautiful i will put the link of this bible gpt in the description below so you can try this out that's it as simple as that while using this tool make sure that you are led by the spirit so that you can understand the verse more clearly i'm going to create more videos similar to this so stay tuned i hope you like this video do like share and subscribe and thanks for watching